Today we are launching uh, an appeal for $4.4 billion for Afghanistan itself for 2022. This is the largest ever appeal for a single country for humanitarian assistance. And it is three times the amount needed and actually uh, fundraised in uh, 2021. Humanitarian agencies within Afghanistan can only operate if, the, if there's cash in the economy which can be used to pay officials, salaries, costs, fuel, and so forth. So liquidity in, in, in its first uh, phase is a humanitarian issue. It's not just a bigger economic issue. This is a stopgap, an absolutely essential stopgap uh, measure that we are putting in front of the international community today. Without this being funded, there won't be a future. We need this to be done, otherwise they will, there will be outflow, there will be suffering. In a world first, a terminally ill man in the US has received a heart transplant from a genetically modified pig. Doctors say 57-year-old David Bennett of Maryland is doing well, three days after the experimental procedure. The surgery took seven hours and was performed by a team at the University of Maryland Medicine. It was seen as the last hope for Bennett, who had been suffering from terminal heart disease. That meant doctors were able to receive an emergency authorization for the operation from the FDA. Dr. Bartley Griffith was Bennett's surgeon. He's awake, he is um, recovering and speaking to his caregivers, and um, we hope uh, that uh, the recovery that he is having now will continue. We've never done this in a human, and I like to think that we have given him a better option than what continuing his therapy would have been, but whether it's a day, week, month, year, I don't know. The pig heart was provided by Revivacor, a regenerative medicine company based in Virginia. Prior efforts at pig-to-human transplants have failed because of genetic differences that caused organ rejection or viruses that posed an infection risk. Scientists have tackled that problem by editing away potentially harmful genes. Probably the biggest risk is now. Um, we seem to be past what we consider the hyperacute rejection phase that we would normally have seen in an animal organ that wasn't specially treated. So we feel good about that one. So we're preparing for the next attack on his organ. We know that uh, the pig heart will be attacked by different soldiers in our body. Different immune players can take it out and we have designed a treatment plan in addition to the humanized, genetically edited heart to try to account for that. If the surgery ends up being a success, Scientists hope pig organs could help alleviate shortages of donor organs. According to government statistics, there are about 11,000 Americans currently waiting for an organ transplant, and more than 6,000 patients die each year before getting one. The Nasdaq staged a late-day rebound Monday after a morning sell-off briefly sent the tech-loaded index into correction territory. Bargain hunters entered the arena in the afternoon, helping the Nasdaq eke out a slight gain. Industrial and material stocks were the biggest losers. The Dow lost more than 160 points, or nearly a half percent. The S&P 500 declined a tenth percent, and the Nasdaq closed nearly flat. Allianz Bernstein Senior Portfolio Manager Valerie Grant said investors are focused on rising interest rates. I think that investors are really digesting um, the uh, FOMC meeting from last week uh, with an expectation of perhaps a rate increase as early as March and then several additional uh, increases in 2022. Uh, combine that with uh, perhaps quantitative uh, tightening um, and that has investors a bit nervous. Nike was the Dow's biggest decliner. HSBC downgraded shares of the athletic apparel maker to hold. On the S&P, that dubious honor went to Take-Two Interactive. The maker of the Grand Theft Auto video game franchise fell 13 percent after it announced it's buying mobile game developer Zynga for $11 billion. Zynga shares shot up more than 40 percent. Shares of Lululemon fell. The yoga pants retailer warned that the spread of the Omicron variant would hurt its revenue for the holiday quarter.
Uber rival Bolt says it's raised new money to help take on the US giant. The Estonia-based firm says it got just over $711 million from investors led by Sequoia Capital and Fidelity Management and Research. That took its valuation to almost $8.4 billion, nearly double the price put on it at the last funding round in August. Besides ride-hailing, Bolt also offers services including scooter rentals, car sharing and fast grocery deliveries. It says it now has over 100 million customers in 45 countries. Rivalry with Uber has led to price wars in many locations. Bolt says it is focused on staying frugal and lowering costs for consumers. The firm says it's now expanding all five of its product lines and rolling out service to new cities. It's already operating in over 400 towns across Europe and Africa.